Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, thanks for bearing with me with the technical difficulties. Um, I uh, am also really appreciative to everyone uh, who is joining us as part of this wonderful uh, speaker panel. Really uh, looking forward to engaging with everyone today. Uh, we're going to be talking about innovations in mobile assessments and treatments and then uh, discuss applications to precision treatment of psychopathology. Um, our speakers today are really going to be talking specifically about uh, different types of assessment and treatment. On the assessment end, we're going to be talking about new methods of assessment uh, regarding continuously collected data in persons' daily lives, including biometrics, social, and behavioral patterns uh, that are uh, newly um, capable of being assessed uh, through these through these innovative methods. And then uh, treatment um, with really a discussion regarding the unprecedented opportunities to deliver treatment uh, within the context of daily life and allowing uh, really folks to receive treatment in the context of uh, the times in which they're in greatest needs. Um, just to get everybody on the same page on the types of data that we're going to be talking about, I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen and, and talk about um, just a brief highlight of some of the signals uh, that are we have access to regarding these types of methods, just so that uh, folks can be somewhat familiar with this. Um, but we're uh, using things like a, a lot of the panelists today will be talking about smartphones and wearable sensors. And I just want to give uh, some folks some some kind of um, kind of opportunity to see what these kinds of things look like in terms of the incoming data streams. This is my own data from a uh, nationally uh, from a study funded by the National Institute of Mental Health that Andrew and I are working on together um, to try to track depression. Um, we are. Um, you can see that uh, we get things like types of activities that are used from uh, different types of uh, classification systems on the smartphone, um, audio amplitude, uh, speech uh, uh, that's happening in person, uh, conversation durations, things like light, phone usage, uh, batteries, um, like continuously assessed heart rate and heart rate variability, uh, sleep quality, um, stress um, from a metric from heart rate variability, um, respiration, um, blood oxygen, uh, and and this is in kind of movement and where where geolocation data where everyone is going throughout the course of life. These are the kinds of signals we're going to be talking about. Just a, a broad sense of the some of the types of streams that we're going to be talking about and highlighting today. But we'll we'll dive into I'm sure a deep dive of what that actually uh, then looks like. So um, with, without further ado, I'll kind of introduce the context of um, the panelists. So Andrew, uh, Dr. Andrew Campbell is gonna be uh, talking about smartphone sensors and ecological momentary assessment technologies in regard to monitoring changes in mental health and behavior in college students during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. David Moore is gonna be talking about the use of smartphone sensors uh, to estimate the severity of common mental health problems like anxiety and depression. Um, and he's also gonna be talking about detecting behaviors related to these conditions, including sleep, movement, and verbal behavior. Dr. Tamzine Chowdhury is gonna be uh, talking about continuous and unobtrusive sensing related to acting as an early warning system to detect changes in mental health well-being. Uh, delivering personalized uh, interventions to patients when and where they need them, and significantly accelerating the patient and physician understanding of changes in their mental health in real time. I'm going to be talking about using some machine learning models and some passively collected uh, wearable and smartphone sensor data uh, to uh, predict and uh, get develop personalized indicators of anxiety disorders and post-traumatic stress disorders. And then finally, uh, Dr. Sabina Wilhelm is going to be talking about uh, the novel development and evaluation of a scalable mobile treatment for body dysmorphic disorder. Um, we're going to have uh, some short talks, about nine minutes or so a piece, and then after that we will have uh, plenty of time for a general discussion where we'll hopefully uh, talk about um, some, of, uh, some of what we talked about during, folks highlighted during their, uh, their talks, but then also diving into maybe some of the important developments and controversies in the field. Uh